Apache Spark has a long held its position as a powerful distributed computation framework. Its ability to process large volumes of data quickly, support complex computations with versatile programming model has made it a preferred choice. However, the emergence of Snowflake Snowpark has recently raised questions about the future of Apache Spark. The question arises, will Apache Spark be able to survive in this era of Snowflake Snowpark? Before we answer this question, let's see the strength and weaknesses of Apache Spark at very high level. The Spark is an open source efficient distributed computing system allows a lot of flexibility to work with variety of data platforms like EMR, Databricks, or Cloudera. Apache Spark has been battle tested over the years. It is supported by vast user community. It has rich ecosystem of libraries and tools built around it. It has sophisticated machine learning capabilities. The Spark's fault tolerance and ability to handle streaming data make it well suited for a wide range of data processing scenarios. We surely know that Snowflake slash Snowpark is not an open source technology and it is built for cloud native platform and available as a data warehouse as a service that supports super efficient storage as well as super fast computing. And in this video, we will discuss the challenges with Apache Spark platform and will the data platform team around the world will lean more towards Snowpark library to solve complex data problem or not. So stay tuned until the end of this video and you will be fully informed if Apache Spark will survive or not. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this everything about Snowpark playlist for true data professionals and data engineers like you. And in this episode, episode 9, we will discuss the key strength and challenges with Apache Spark and will Apache Spark survive with the popularity of Snowflake Snowpark library. We have already finished 8 episodes in this playlist. We are going to discuss many different topics related to Snowpark which is covered in this 12 part series. You can pause the video, review the topic and jump to a specific episode if that interests you. Links for all the videos can be found in the description section below or above in the info card. These videos are recorded in 4K resolution. Follow the instruction for better resolution and to learn it faster. While Apache Spark is widely adopted and powerful computing framework, it does come with its own set of challenges. Here are some key challenges often encountered when working with Apache Spark. Apache Spark's rich feature set and flexibility can make it complex for beginners. It requires understanding concepts like RDDs, data frame, transformations and actions, stages, shuffle, and many more. Efficiently managing resources in Apache Spark can be a challenge, particularly in large-scale deployments. Determining the right amount of memory, CPU cores, and cluster size for optimal performance is a crucial. When dealing with large data set, data skew and data imbalance can occur, and this can lead to an uneven distribution of workload across the cluster. Apache Spark relies on data serialization and shuffling during stages of computation such as data movement between nodes for operations like joins and aggregation. As data developer, you must have in-depth knowledge, else it impacts the job performance. As with many distributed computing framework, debugging and troubleshooting issues in Apache Spark can be challenging. It can handle streaming data, but it comes with challenges like ensuring low latency processing, handling out of order data, managing stateful operations and maintaining fault tolerance in streaming systems can be complex and require careful design and tuning. As these challenges make your development and maintenance activities more time consuming as well as very very expensive. And in today's current situation, all businesses want to keep their data platform cost under control. It is also hard to find a good architect who has rich experience building large scale Spark based solutions. And these challenges and complexities has nothing to do with business challenges, but more related to Spark framework challenges and hard to justify the business sponsors. So when we talk about cost, we are not going to discuss the human element cost that includes your data development team, leads and architect, but we will discuss the storage and compute cost 
when it comes to Apache Spark versus Snowflake slash Snowpark. There are many ways you can run your Apache Spark framework. There are many teams that build their own Hadoop and data platform by using Apache Hadoop libraries. Second very popular approach is to host your Spark job using Cloudera data platform. Third is Databricks Runtime, which is a cloud-based pay-as-you-go model. And finally, we have Amazon EMR, where you can host your Spark job. We have one more service from AWS, which is very, very popular. That is called AWS Glue. There are many more. And these are the most popular platform and services that can host your Spark job. When it comes to pricing, we will quickly see how simple the Snowflake pricing model compared to your Databricks and EMR services. It's hard to talk about Hadoop distribution or a Cloudera data platform cost because they are more on on-premises side. When you go to Databricks pricing page, at first, you will not get a clear picture. There are so many options available and each option has a different pricing tag. And it will force you to think how your workload will look like in future. You need to understand what is this DBU? How many DBU each workload will incur in the future? and what would be my total cost of ownership in short, medium and long term. If I switch to EMR, this is relatively easy but also comes with a lot of options. EMR on EC2, EMR on EKS, EMR on AWS Outpost, EMR serverless. And here is an example and AWS page gives an example where one master four node cluster cost per month is close to $1,100. So it comes close to $1.5 per hour. Now, if we go to Snowflake, they have a very simple pricing page. It's purely a credit based approach along with your edition, which you're applying to Pi. You can always upgrade your needs from standard edition to any higher edition. You can start with the standard enterprise, business critical and VPS. As you go to higher edition, you add more features and also pay higher for the compute. It doesn't mean that Snowflake is cheap. However, compared to all the platform which host Spark has a very complex pricing approach. On the other side, Snowflake gives a very clear credit based competition pricing which makes any business to decide whether they like this pricing or not. On the other hand, Snowflake and Snowpark are much more easier to learn. Snowpark has no resource management complexity, no data skewness issues, no serialization and shuffling burden and all these burdens are taken care by Snowflake's cloud service layer and that makes Snowpark slash Snowflake's developers life super simple and easy. Snowflake is adding streaming features and all these features can be accessed using Snowpark via SQL queries or via Snowpark APIs. When you try to understand these core challenges, Snowflake slash Snowpark look super feature rich and very simple to manage and develop. When we look into Snowpark, it is not a framework and we have learned this in chapter 1 and in chapter 2 of this playlist. It is just a library that extends all Snowflake's core feature and allow a programmer to use their Python or Java or Scala programming skill to interact with Snowflake. So all the core features of Snowflake is automatically available and can be used using Snowpark library. And that's what make Snowpark very, very powerful library. And it is hard for Apache Spark to catch up with. To attract more and more Spark developers, easy path for Spark to Snowpark migration, Snowflake has skipped the Snowpark Python API syntax look alike Apache Spark. And this gives a super competitive advantage to them. And existing Snowpark developer don't have to learn a new programming style all together and can be onboarded in any Snowflake project. Only time will tell whether Apache Spark can withstand the evolving landscape. However, the introduction of Snowpark by Snowflake has significantly altered the cloud data warehouse landscape, posing a challenge for Apache Spark community. While Snowflake may have its own flaws, it is swiftly developing new features and ensuring the availability of stream processing with new stream pipe object and machine learning libraries through secure sandbox environment. I assume this chapter has brought enough awareness if Apache Spark will survive and if so, how long and what Apache Spark is doing to stay relevant. Thank you for watching episode 9. In our upcoming chapter, 
we will explore the growth and evolution of tools such as Azure ADF, Azure Synapse and Databricks runtime environment in the context of emergence of Snowflake Snowpark library. These tools are extensively utilized to tackle various data challenges, but they also come with their own set of obstacles. Our next video, Chapter 10, will examine whether Snowpark will alter this computing landscape and how will it do so. If you have learned something valuable from this episode, don't forget to press on the like button and share with other data engineers and Snowflake developers. Happy learning and keep growing.